Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Are you serious? Are you serious? Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and you're in for a great broadcast today. Probably one of the most sharpest minds and prophetically intellectual speakers that we have in the world today. Our guest, Avi Lepkin. And we are coming to you broadcasting from the Sephardic House here in Jerusalem. It's a beautiful beautiful facility. I'll tell you that now. There may be people walking around. You may hear sounds. Don't worry. It is in their uh, uh, courtyard that we're filming. Avi, welcome to the broadcast. It's great to have you. Great to see you again and great to be back on the air with you. Shalom, shalom. Y'all. Uh, Avi, there's been a lot going on and you've been a very busy man. Uh, and uh, But I want to jump right into some stuff. First of all, uh, there's a French in, in France, 20 nations gathered talking about a resolution of a two-state solution. But Israel's not at the table, Palestine's not at the table, or the Palestinians. I asked Yehuda Glick this question yesterday in an interview, and he slammed the desk. He said, how can there be a marriage if there's no bridegroom and no bride? Right. Okay? I want to get your perspective, because this isn't about asking you your opinion. Now, they're not asking Israel their opinion. They're, they're talking about a forcible two-state solution. Right. What, is you, what do you think this means and where is this going? Okay, well, firstly, there will not be a Palestinian state, period, because the Palestinians do not want a state. The only thing they want is to kill Jews and Christians. I've been talking about this now 26 years. Uh, the French can stand on their heads, the Europeans can st stand on their heads, and President Obama can also stand on his head. <laughs> uh, and I have to tell you something. You, you know, the presidential elections in the United States, I'll come back to France in just a second. Okay. Presidential elections, I believe, are November 7th. Uh, November 7th. Okay. So the day after the presidential elections, President Obama, who is a lame duck, but he still has plans. Yes. Because I've been saying all along, he's a Saudi plant, and his, President Obama's plan is to destroy the state of Israel. Now, how is he going to destroy the state of Israel? This is how it works. Okay. Do you remember the American ambassador to the United Nations, Samantha Powers? I absolutely, I, she's, I know exactly who she is. I know what she said okay. 10 years ago. Or 20 or 12 years, years ago. ago, whatever it was. Yeah, she wrote a position paper uh, for the U.S. administration that the U.S. military, probably together with NATO, yeah. should invade Israel, should ramrod a Palestinian state down the throats of the Israelis, force Israel back to the borders of June the 5th, 67, which means 700,000 Jews, 700,000 700, Jews, have to be uprooted from their homes, including East Jerusalem, where we are right now. Oh, no, no. Okay, so this is something which is never going to be. And I think one of the problems in the administration in Washington and in Paris with this conference is that these people are still thinking that this is the end of World War I okay. and the Sykes-Picot Treaty where they can divide up the Middle East. We see the results of the Sykes-Picot Treaty now. There is no more Syria. There is no more Iraq. There's no more borders in the Middle no East more borders, almost, except and, Israel. And I have news for you, and I speak about this in the churches. Lebanon is going to be attacked by ISIS. Okay. Uh, this uh, Jordan is going to fall soon to ISIS. Saudi Arabia is going to fall soon Whoa. to ISIS. Okay. All okay. these countries are going to disappear. It's going to be complete bedlam. Uh, Turkey is going to have its own problems because 31% of Turkey is Shiite Alawite. Okay. Like yes, Bashar al-Assad. Yes, okay. 25% is Kurdish. Okay. So actually the Turkish Turks themselves are only 44% of their own country. So they're not even a majority of their own country. Exactly. And Iran is going to overturn Turkey. Iran is also going to be overthrown because 50% of Iran is Persian uh, Shiite. Shiite. And the rest are minorities. And they're not happy. Nobody's happy. Uh, all these artificial borders set by France and England 100 years ago, this is all coming apart now at the seams. It is not going to work with a so-called two-state solution. What it will do is it will entice the Palestinians and the Muslims to attack Israel, which I think is going to lead to Israel having to defend itself, meaning new borders in which Israel's borders actually expand. Because they'll, they'll probably get maybe uh, part of Jordan, 
Yeah. Uh, and maybe even a little bit of the cyanide. It's which... called Deuteronomy 11. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, a couple things here. You know, Yeshua said in, uh, in Matthew, he said that nation would rise against nation. Okay, I understand that. But then kingdom against kingdom. Right. So that's kind of what you're explaining here. Is right. that the borders are being erased. Right. And, and ISIS kind of, you know, we had this Arab Spring, which really believe Obama was a lot of with whether he meant to do it or he accidentally did it with a failed foreign policy. Right. But what's come from that is when ISIS has eliminated the border between Iraq and Syria. It's yes. just now uh, the Babylon, uh, like Babylon, ancient Babylon rising again. Right. And these guys are cruel. They're evil. They're brutal. Uh, so you see it all falling apart, basically, because ultimately a Shiite Sunni War And you said something to me last time I interviewed you, and I really wanted the television audience to hear this. You felt that this war would go on and that the black stone there in Mecca would even get blown up. Yes, ISIS said that they're going to blow it up because it's one of these pre-Islamic sites. And it was a site of really, really horrible transgressions and abominations uh, where uh, the people, the pagans, during the time of Moses, because Moses was there and Aaron was there and Jephthah was the high priest of that black stone, according to my book, you know, Return to Mecca. So I talk about all these things. And, the, and what they would do is they would have uh, fornication with temple prostitutes. Yeah. If you know the story about Pinchas, when he skewers the Israelite prince with the Midianite princess, this is a, a taking place, I believe, at the black stone where Jethro was the high priest. That's why Jethro had to flee to Israel with the 12 tribes. Because he had to get out of there. To get out of there, because he was the father in law of this Moses, this right. troublemaker. But also, they had also burning their children on the altar of Molech, which is like a postnatal form of abortion. Uh, homosexuality. Everybody yeah. says you can't talk about homosexuality, but it's right there in That's, the Bible. Right. Bestiality is not cruel behavior. Bestiality is right. sleeping with animals. Right. And, you know, I have been in Europe many times. I'm hearing now that people are marrying animals. They are. And, and they're getting animals baptized in the churches in Europe. I mean, oh, there's, no, some, no. there's some crazy stuff going on there. There's brothels that are opening up now with animals. Right. Okay, they're marrying animals, and like yeah. you said, bringing them into the church, baptize them. Yeah. And, and the church, uh, uh, just imagine a church saying, that's okay, bring it in. So ISIS says that black stone, you know, uh, was a horrible place. It has to be yes. destroyed. And Mohammed, which is, who's the four founder of Islam, the founder of Allah and all these crazy things, uh, you know, Mohammed had no right to adopt such an evil uh, abomination place into this new pristine Islam. So is, ISIS actually wants to purify Islam to get rid of this uh, black stone. So right. ISIS is going to do it. So ISIS is because of this, and they are literally anything that stands in their way right you know the infidels is not just jews and christians but it's anyone that's non-muslim right and we've seen just a few days ago and even muslims even muslims yeah. because just a few days ago they took the yiddy women yeah. the, uh, the yes, kurds yes, the yes, Yazidis, yes. and they went and uh burned them alive 19 of them burned yeah. them alive in a steel cage in the yeah. public square so there's no there's no limits to what they will do it's all justified in their mind through the quran right. i take it you know, I have to tell you, I'm married to Rachel. Rachel is an Egyptian Jewish woman who yes. left Egypt at age 20. Arabic is her mother tongue. And so in our house, the radio and TV are always open to the Arabic language stations. We have the radio going TV at the same time. We're right. following everything. We have uh, cable TV in Arabic. So we have like 1,300 Arabic stations and we're watching everything. We have our little center in our house, our, right. our communication center. You're monitoring center. the whole Middle we're East. We're monitoring everything. So we were watching a, a Jordanian comedian, a Muslim, Sunni Muslim. Okay. And he got a death sentence from ISIS because he was making fun of them. What was he doing? He was pretending to be a guard, you know, at a checkpoint, and a car drives up, and he's very friendly. You know, how are you? Good morning. You know, where are you from? Lebanon. Oh, you're from Lebanon. Da, 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 and he shoots all of them. Now, let me explain this. Okay, okay. According to ISIS, every Lebanese must die. Every Lebanese. You have Druze. The Druze are descended right. from Jethro. They have to die. The Shiites have to die. The Christians have to die. And even the Sunni Muslims, ISIS is Sunni, but the Lebanese Sunnis are infidels and heretics and traitors because they are in bed with the Druze, with the Shiites, and with the Christians. So they got to die too. Everybody in Lebanon has to die. And you want to know something? One day, listen to my words. I'm listening. The four ethnic groups of Lebanon will beg Israel to come in and defend them because I believe Russia is, I won't say they're close to bankruptcy, but Russia is not able to continue for a long time with what's going on in Syria. 
there's too much they can't fund it it's it's too expensive right is, is that one of the reasons that putin said okay our mission is done i'm pulling back and then three months later now he's coming back yes and 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 bashar al-assad will fall yes because i've been saying that because yes. bashar al-assad is outnumbered 85 to 15. the islamic world is 85 percent sunni and 15 percent shiite even with iran even with russia bashar's time is uh, limited let me ask you a question you, you moved into this uh, with the presidential situation. Right. Trump is now our nominee right. in America. Clinton just clinched it last right. night. Right. Um, does it matter which one wins? And, and, and let me ask you this question. Uh, we know how the uh, Clinton says she's going to carry on the Obama administration. She's going to carry it on. Uh, and we know Obama has been pretty cold with, uh, as, with Netanyahu. Right. It's not been a good relationship. Right. Trump is, my opinion, Trump's going to win the election. I'm not sure. Do you see that change in the atmosphere between Israel and America? Well, I have no doubt that Trump will be a much better president for Israel, and he'll be a much better president for the American people, too. I mean, when I hear a president who comes and says, our debt is $19 trillion, right. and with our oil, and with our fracking, with our coal, all this, we can bring down by a notch each time from 19 trillion to 18 trillion to 17 right. trillion. And you have to remember when Obama became president, it was 5 trillion, went up to 19 trillion. It's kind of like a death wish to destroy right. the American economy. So I, I have a feeling as a good businessman, uh, Trump knows what he's doing and he will be able, it's all about economics. So he'll right. be able to do it. He a, will a, lead that charge. Right. We'll be right back with another segment with our good friend Avi Lipkin here from Jerusalem. A brand new book I've just finished called Reflections from the Land of the Prophets. This book is filled with beautiful pictures, a pictorial, if you will, of the Holy Land and some definite great insight to the prophets that once spoke mightily in the times leading us up to the present. It's a prophetic word, a reflection of what God has spoken, not only historically from the past, but for the future. Go to my website. It's available now. Are you serious? We are having a great time here at the Sephardic House, right in the old city of Jerusalem. My guest, Avi Lipkin, well-known author, uh, been on many uh, uh, television shows, radio shows, he travels all over the world. Uh, uh, absolutely, I put him right up there with Chuck Misler as some of the top biblical prophecy minds in the world. And I'm gonna go right back to Donald Trump because in America, it's, it's a phenomenon what he has done. There's no question about it. And he keeps talking about fixing the economy, bringing the jobs back to America and defending the Christians. He keeps saying they're, they're, ISIS is killing Christians. You know, the executions in Iraq and Syria, something's gotta be done. They have to be stopped. He keeps saying that he will be a friend of Israel, that Israel, you know, with, has never seen a friend like he will be. So Avi, tell me, is he, is he as good as gold? Is he, is, uh, can he deliver? I believe yes. I'm a, a solid supporter of Trump. Uh, I, you'll have to forgive me. I'm, I was born and raised in New York, oh, okay. <laughs> near New York City. <laughs> and I, I hear the guy, it's like we grew up in the same neighborhood and right. we went to high school together. And, you know, like I have a, I feel a, a personally a very strong chemistry uh, with Trump. Uh, don't forget that he, his daughter converted to Judaism, yes, married she a did. Jewish guy, Orthodox. Yes, that's true. Uh, there is a chemistry between Trump, the Trump family, and the Jewish people and Israel. And, uh, you know, uh, Mayor Cuomo, was, uh, Governor Cuomo was in Israel. He said if, if, if the BDS uh, comes against, you know, the boycott, divestment, right. sanctions right. against Israel, New, York's, New York will not have anything to do with those companies. So, you know, New York, firstly, is a place which has to be pro-Israel. Um, but Trump, like I said before, he's a businessman, he's spot on, he knows the economics, he's, he has many businesses, he's been successful in many businesses. I don't know what Hillary has done, and I don't know what Obama has done as regarding having businesses which succeeded. I know that Hillary had a business with her husband called Whitewater, and a lot of people died mysteriously after all the scandals broke about Whitewater. For some reason, anyone who's connected with Bill and Hillary, they end up dying. It's uh, not a good thing. It's, you know, Vince Foster and all the... I know. And I'll say one more thing, which you're not expecting me. This is going to be a big surprise. The Oklahoma City bombing, May 19th, 1995, the bombing was blamed, was pinned on the Christians. Yes. The McVeigh, McVeigh and Nichols. And Nichols right. They were right-wing Christian right. militia from Waco. Right. Okay. Now, Merrick Garland, 
who is the Obama nominee for security, uh, Supreme, Supreme Court, Court Justice. Court. Yes. Uh, he was deputy to Janet Reno. Oh, no, during the Waco thing that was during going Waco on? During Waco and during uh, Oklahoma City. Okay. In Oklahoma City, everybody knows this guy. Forget about he, he'll take away all your guns. Right. This guy was behind blaming the Christians for something the Christians didn't do, the right. Muslims did. And what we see today, what Christian churches and Christians saying are saying, the persecution of the church, persecution of the Christians, right. is something that started with the, Christian, with the uh, Clinton administration in the 1990s. This is not something that started today with Obama. No. This is a process. And as a Jew, and I know my people have been blamed for many things which we never did, but we're always the scapegoats. Now the Christians are the Jews. The Christians are we're being the blamed. ones taking the persecution now. Yeah. And and matter of fact, uh, the Clintons go back to 1998. They're personal friends with Mohammed Mercy yeah. and his wife. Yeah. Okay, so this relationship, and we know that the Clinton Foundation got a lot of money donated to his foundation right. from Arabic nations. We know that that, and we know Hillary Clinton's uh, right hand, uh, Uma Abedin, of course, is a daughter of the Muslim Sisterhood. Right. So as, to your point, there's the option for America, and we get asked this question all the time, uh, but look, Let's go to Donald Trump for a second. You just explained the Clinton background. Right. Trump, his mother was a Presbyterian. Uh, she was an intercessory prayer warrior. Prayer was big in his home. Even uh, uh, when he announced that he was going to run, he called 40 uh, evangelical ministers to the Trump Tower, including Dr. David Jeremiah and Paula White and uh, several, there was 40. They anointed him with oil and prayed over him. He said, lay your hands on me, pray before I take on this journey. So I think that to your point, the Israel, he's a great friend of Israel and he's a defender of Christianity. Uh, I think it's very important, this, this election for America and the free world, a lot's hanging on a balance, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, I think God's judgment is now on America to see if the American people are gonna get the president that they deserve and if it's not the right person, it will be very bad judgment on wow. uh, on America. I wow. think Trump, uh, you know, Putin says he likes him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? World leaders like a strong leader. Yes, they do. Because they, they know where they stand with yeah, him. You yeah. don't like that wishy-washy stuff. Yeah. Speaking of that, again, let's go back to what's been going on in France. 20 nations. The French want to bring a resolution to the table. At, uh, they want to bring it to the floor of the General Assembly this fall. Right. A two, a two state solution, they call it, but it's a forced one. It, right. it doesn't include the feedback from both Israel right. or the Palestinians. How can this work? How can a forced two state solution, can they even do that and would it work? The answer is no. Can you build a house or a building on quicksand? No. Middle East is quicksand. And like I said before, as long as there is a religion called Islam, Okay. Okay. This says kill the Jews on Saturday, kill the Christians on Sunday. I don't know what kind of peace you can be talking about. We see a Holocaust going on with ISIS. The yes, Palestinians, they're ISIS. They're all ISIS. Like, go up, you're here in the old city. Yeah. Go up on the roof. You'll see black flags of ISIS in, on the rooftops in East right Jerusalem. Right now. Right now. Yeah. That's right. And they're going to take Jordan. They're going to have black flags along the Jordan River. And they're going to be digging tunnels under the Jordan River. Do you think Israel's going to be able to just say, have a good day? Well, do you have to throw Iran in this now? Because look who's, who, who supports Hamas. Yeah. And who's, who supports Hezbollah? And who's supporting the Houthis that overtook Yemen? So does Iran end up funding ISIS? That is a very good question. ISIS and Iran are bitter enemies. Okay. ISIS and Iran are fighting each other. And so what we see happening here, the only reason Iran is helping Hamas in Gaza is because Hamas is an enemy of Israel. Okay, okay. okay yes. uh, but you have to remember Hamas is Sunni. Yes. So this is just a proxy. This support. is just a. Just proxy support. Okay. And uh, when the ISIS kills Sunni Arabs, Sunni Muslims, and uh, they say, listen, anyone who does business with the Shiites has to be killed. So, of course, the Shiites all have to be killed. The bottom line of ISIS and, and Al Qaeda and Jabhat al Nusra is to kill the Shiites. And they've been doing a very good job for 1,400 years of killing each other. You know, the Catholics and Protestants had this war of reformation 300 years. And now the only place where Catholics and Protestants are fighting are in the soccer fields in Northern Ireland. <laughs> Otherwise, Catholics and Protestants kind of get along. They, they're getting along now. But, yeah. but in, this, this is not a joke. I mean, the, what's going on between the Shiites and the Sunnis has no good solution other than they kill each other. All right.
and either one side dies or both sides die. So here's a question. When, when the Iranian nuke deal came in, and I was interviewing you last year, and we were talking about this as a very right. dangerous thing. Yeah. And the, you have the six superpowers of the world, and they invite Iran to the table and give them the keys to the superpower kingdom, if you right. will. Right, right. Uh, what, what, was, what was Obama, what was China's President Jinping, what was Putin, what were they thinking? Yeah. And what, what was the benefit to the world in their mind and, uh, to allow Iran to become a world player with nuclear capability? One word, economy. It's all about the economy. The American economy, the European economy, even Russia, China, everybody is all interlinked economically. Okay. And Iran is a key uh, for the world economy. So it's kind of like you, if, the, if the West gave Iran the nuclear capabilities, which includes the hydrogen bomb. I know. The hydrogen bomb has no peaceful use. Why did they give Iran the hydrogen bomb? So maybe it's in order to give Iran enough rope to hang themselves. Mm. Now, you've got to remember something. And Netanyahu now was in Russia with Putin. Right. The next day, the top security people of Russia, Iran, and Syria met. Wow. Okay, now I think that Netanyahu and, uh, was sending a message to Iran. We're not your enemy. Right. You know, the Jews were allies of Iran under the Shah. We were allies with the, with the Persian people throughout history. This is an anomaly. So you actually think Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to send a message to Iran? Yeah. Look, we don't want to be your enemy. We would, Absolutely. Why can't we be, why can't we be uh, mutually respectful one another? Absolutely. It's not a question of respect. Uh, there, you know, there is this uh, Mughnia, who was the head of the uh, Hezbollah, and he was killed by whoever he was killed. Nobody wants to take the credit for it. But Mughnia's son said recently, we should not attack Israel now at all because Israel tactically is our ally against the, Sh the Sunnis. You have to remember something. The, the Hezbollah, Iran, they're 15%. Yes, I and know. And the Sunnis are 85%. And, you know, I'll say something kind of sad, but, you know, in World War II, the Germans had the best army. The Germans yeah, they had did. the best soldiers. Yes. The problem was we outproduced them. And I, I saw something, D-Day was just a few days ago. Right. And there was a German soldier who was, who was a machine gunner. And he was mowing down the American soldiers coming off the uh, landing craft. And uh, he said, we fired all our bullets. And there were more coming. There were, they we just kept stop. coming. Yeah, they just kept coming. So uh, it's like... The war of attrition. So you're saying... It's not a war of attrition. They outnumbered the Germans. They outproduced the Germans. And the same between the Sunnis and the, and the Shiites. The Sunnis have just so much more population. They have so much more capability. And Shi Shiites are going to lose. Even if Russia's with them and even China's with them. It won't matter. It's not going to matter. Uh, do you see Assad in Syria surviving? No. You, I mean, but Putin uh, seems to be totally, constantly propping him up. I think he'd already be gone if Putin... Very correct. Had, very correct. And, and why is he protecting him? Uh, well, because uh, Russia has economic interests with Iran. Okay. Okay. Russia has economic interests with Iraq, which is now run by Iran. Right. Uh, Russia has its own. Let me put it like this. This is, again, it's a horrible thing to say. America, Europe, back the Sunnis. So yes, Russia, China, North Korea, which back is not the Shiites. Like, they back the Shiites. There are no good guys here. Everybody's backing people for economic reasons. Right. And so the Russians have their reason to do it. And Israel is in the middle. Israel doesn't right. want, the Shiites and the Sunnis both want to destroy Israel. So Israel's trying to maneuver itself. I always used to say in the churches that Israel is like a flower in the middle of the desert. And now I say, no, Israel is like a flower in the middle of a forest fire. <laughs> but God, it's still blooming. God has his hand on Israel. The Lord. And God has his hand on the Jews and the Christians yes. together. Because yes. we are his chosen people together, the yes. Jews and the Christians. Let's talk a little bit about your political block that you're working right, right. now. Your party. Right. You, you're going to run for the Knesset, I yes. understand. God willing. Tell us about your, your political party. Okay, now, you can tell I'm an American. Yes. I was born and raised in America. I'm 67. I'm already getting Social Security. I, I paid Uncle Sam 25 years, you know, yes. with my work in the right. churches. And I also pay taxes in Israel. Right. So I have two passports, American and Israeli. But I was born and raised and shaped in the crucible of American democracy. And the American Revolution was all about no taxation without representation. Now, we have today in Israel... A number of groups that are not represented in the Knesset, the Arabic-speaking Christians, 
the Russian-speaking Christians, um, American Jews. I'm an American Jew. Right. There are no Americans in the Knesset. Bibi is kind of adopted. Netanyahu, he, he studied in the U.S. Uh, my family's from Argentina. My okay. parents, no Argentine Jews. There's a certain uh, type of people which are prim primarily Jews who came from the Soviet socialist countries of Eastern Europe. And that's 50%. And the other 50% is Jews who came from Islamic countries, like my wife, for example. Right. But Jews and Christians from the West are not represented. Okay. So today, 2% of our population, Arabic-speaking Christians. 6% of our population, Russian, Ukrainian Christians. That's 8%. That should be eight or nine members of Knesset out of 120. And there are no Christians in the Knesset. Wow. We have Muslims in the Knesset. And the Muslims are sworn to kill us and destroy right. us. They're in the Knesset because democracy requires that every constituency be represented. Yeah, have somebody represented. But the Christian constituency is not, uh, not represented. represented. So that's 8%. Jews married to Christians is 6%. So at this moment, my constituency is already 14%, right. which is 14, 15 members of Knesset. Wow. Maybe a cabinet portfolio minister, okay, if we get in. Now, here comes the Grand Slam home run, which is a horrible thing to say about a horrible thing that's about to happen. Right. ISIS, Al-Qaeda... All these Islamic terrorist groups and Islamic agendas, including the Obama Islamic agenda, is to make America a Muslim country, which means the end of Judaism. Right. Uh, the killing of all the and Jews in America. And Christianity. And Christianity. You kill the Jew on Saturday, you kill the Christian on Sunday. This is the Islamic faith. Right. So what's happening is you have six million Jews in America. Intermarriage with Christians in America right, is 80%. Right. Okay. So for 100 Jews, you have 80 Christians, which means you're going to have 180 people moving to Israel. Translated into six million plus four or three or four million Christians, you're going to have 10 million immigrants coming to Israel. Our borders are going to expand because ISIS is going to destroy everything. And then Jews and Christians are going to come home and occupy, settle on these lands. And then the Messiah shows. Avi, thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you. Always a powerful insight. Folks, I'm telling you, go to his website. They're on the screen. Get his book. Islamic rivalry and let it begin to literally provoke you to search the scriptures and to understand the times we're living in. Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now it has to do with actual 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry.